Hello everybody and welcome to another Renaissance Gaming Series. My name is Gabriel and today I am very happy to bring you the classic computer game Alone in the Dark. So this game is actually pretty personal to me because it is the first memory of a full computer game that I have. I remember playing this way back in 1994 when I was only 4 years old. At the time I had never beaten the game and I was never any good at it but I did spend hours just running around and exploring the game. So it's very nostalgic for me. And I'm also very excited to be recording this on Halloween Day 2014 because this is a survival horror type of game so I'm trying to be thematic here. Probably won't get a chance to upload the series until the first week of November though so hopefully you are still in the Halloween mood by then. So without further ado let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing we can do is choose between two different characters and um, the main difference between them is that one of them is the niece of Jeremy Hartwood. We will soon find out who that is. And the other character is a private investigator. So as you can see here, you have the niece. And then on the right side, you have the private investigator. I picked the private investigator because he's the protagonist in the sequels for this game. So that's what we're going to be going with. So enjoy the intro to the game, and I will see you as soon as it is done. On my door, a dull brass plate says, Private Detective. The few friends I have call me Carnby. The others call me the Reptile. I don't care to think what my banker calls me. These days, I leave my letters unopened. Bills and threats to send in the receivers just ruin my day. When an antique dealer called Gloria Allen contacted me, I slipped into my best shirt, holstered my 38, and got to her shop as fast as I could. I was expecting something sordid. Blackmail, probably. Boy, was I wrong. What I was asked to do was visit a property called Dersetto and find a piano in the loft. It was an old piano with secret drawers, the kind people who buy stuff in antique stores go crazy over. The Dusetto house is supposed to be piled high with classy junk, furniture, books, paintings. It looked like whoever owned Dusetto was about to get cleaned out. I was going to bring up the subject of money when Gloria Allen handed me a hundred and fifty dollars and a key. I kept myself from grinning at the thought of my banker's surprise. He doesn't like his victims getting away. I looked over a copy of the police report. The former owner of Dersetto, a guy called J. Hartwood, had hanged himself in the loft. The coroner concluded it was a clear-cut case of suicide. I promised Gloria Allen I'd give the place a look over. My report will be ready in a couple of days. I've been reading up on the history of the old house. It's the kind of place ghosts run away from in terror. Grizzly murders, curses, Lunacy. <laughs> Luckily, devil worship makes me smile, so this is my idea of a paid vacation.
Okay, so I finally gained control of the character here. First thing I'm going to do is grab this lamp because the game's title is Alone in the Dark. So it's probably a good idea to grab a lamp. So the first thing now is I'm going to push this wardrobe over the window. If you actually pick the other character, Jeremy Hartwood's niece, you will get a hint that Jeremy Hartwood had pushed this wardrobe in front of the window. You will see why I do that soon. But uh, next I'm going to go over and push this chest over the trap door. And you will also see why I'm doing that in a little bit. Uh, it's a good time to just let everybody know that this is a 100% playthrough. So I'm going to be grabbing all of the cutscene items so you can understand the game's story. And I'm going to be grabbing all of the optional items as well. So in here in this chest, I'm going to grab a rifle. Which is going to be pretty exciting to blow some things up in the future. And then I'm going to head over to this little bookshelf and grab me a nice piece of Greek mythology. We'll read that in a little bit. I'm doing this first part quite, kind of quick because um, some monsters are about to pop out. You can see that little monster coming through the window right there as I take this old Indian cover. And this is why I moved that wardrobe to block the window so that monster can't come in and get me. If you remember, we came in here to investigate the piano, so that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to search and I find um, a letter, which I'm going to be reading here in a second. Uh... Yeah, let me go ahead and read that thing. They are coming! They have freed hellish forces, and now the price must be paid. Their seto is the prey of evil. The sun has set. They will find my body, but will not have my soul! I can imagine the master's fury and the terror in the hearts of his slaves. <gasps> I hear their footsteps. Some may understand what I have done. May God forgive me. Farewell, Jeremy Hartwood. All right, so that's Jeremy Hartwood's suicide note, in case you missed that. And if you look at that trapdoor where I pushed the chest, you can see a zombie trying to get out. That's why I pushed that chest. But let me read this uh, book. Oh, hold on, I clicked the wrong thing. Trying to read the book here. Greek mythology for you. Fragment of the Myth of the Golden Fleece. Translation, Edouard de Villeban. Hesperides Publications. Then, Perseus came across Ichios, who had been turned into stone. He spoke to his companions and said, Beware of the Medusa. He who looks into their eyes is doomed to the same fate as that which befell poor Ichios, and will never more set eyes on Seraphos. Must we go blindfolded? asked Emelopes. Take up your bronze shields and polish them until they flash in the sun, answered Perseus. Fill your hearts with courage. May Artemis guide us as though we were an arrow from her quiver. But Emelopes was not satisfied. Why do that, Perseus? Is three inches of sharpened metal not enough to destroy these accursed creatures? Then Perseus drew his sword, which shone and glittered in the sun, and with it he dazzled Emelopes. Now what can you see? The companions of Zeus' sons laughed. Let us set to work so that our shields may shine like mirrors. Okay, so that's actually a hint on how to get past a part of the game, which I'll be doing towards the end of this video. But after you're done with this book and the note, you can just kind of toss that book and put that note down. Bam. And you can make your way out of the attic. So if I don't search something, it's because there's nothing there. Because like I mentioned, this is a 100% playthrough. And we kind of already got a tour of the house from the intro cutscene of him going up to the attic. But right here, I'm going to take this bow 
which is obviously going to be useful later. And then I'm going to search the shelf to get this oil can, which I can use right now to fill up that lamp that I got in the attic. And after you're done with the oil can, you can just toss that thing aside. It's kind of annoying because when you throw things, uh, when you try to move out of the way, you'll step over it and try to take it again. Just one of the faulty mechanics of the game, I suppose. That crack on the floor that you see in the middle, if you go over there, you will die. So in this room, if you step in the rug in the middle, the door will close and a zombie will wait for you outside. I'm going to show you that here, just so you know. But if you avoid the rug in the middle, you can avoid the monster altogether. So I grabbed that key and I'm going to use it to um, open that chest. But first, let me show you the zombie. And I'm going to introduce you to the mechanics of the game here. And right now I'm fighting. Uh, if you hold spacebar when you have the fight command selected, you can use different arrow keys. Right now I'm holding down, and that allows me to kick. But if I hold left or right, I can throw punches. I have shorter ranges, but they go quicker. Um, you definitely want to avoid the monsters if you can, because as you can see here, it takes a ton of hits to kill them, and it can be quite frustrating. And sometimes you have to time it. You can't just uh, spam the kick like I'm doing here. I just got kind of lucky. And there's that creepy old lady painting in the back, in case you didn't notice. So finally that zombie's dead, and I can use the key that I just got to open this chest. And grab a ceremonial sword. An old cavalier sword. Cavalry sword, I'm sorry. So yeah, don't step in that crack in the middle of the hallway. You have to go into this room, and... If you close this door, you can avoid another zombie. So definitely close it or else a zombie is going to come and chase you through this door. And we do not want that, of course. Alright, so... Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get my rifle because I'm about to engage in a battle. As soon as you pick up this vase, you're going to get ambushed by a monster. So you want to be ready with your rifle. And bam, he just comes through the window. I still can't decide what this thing is. I don't know if it's a bird, a dog, I don't know what the hell it is. But, bam, just took a shotgun to the face. Just waiting for him to regather his senses before, bam, blast him with a second one. Nice. So, I am going to throw the vase that I just got, because there are some things in there. Uh, notably, a key. So, you don't need to get the shards, but definitely need the key, and you can use it in this uh, cupboard right away. And take two small mirrors, which we will be using. If you remember the Greek mythology we read talking about mirrors, there's a hint for you there. Um, I'm going to throw these keys down because I don't need them anymore. And I like to keep my inventory pretty clear. And here you can see that zombie I was talking about that we avoided. He can't go down the middle because the floor's cracked. But he was going to try to chase you through that door, but he can't because he closed it. So, good stuff. And here is the bathroom. There is a first aid kit with a health flask. So I'm going to be grabbing that. And you can use the flask right away because you have unlimited health in this game. Uh, unlimited as in it can go as high as anything you want. So you don't have to lose health to need to use uh, the flask if that makes sense. Now let me get rid of the first aid kit and the empty flask here. Uh, I don't think I threw that for some reason. Huh. Oh well, we'll see. So here is the part that that Greek mythology book was referring to. We need to use the mirror on these gargoyle looking creatures or else they would just uh, destroy the crap out of you. And if you get hit while you have these mirrors in your inventory, they will actually shatter. So it's very important not to get hit. Let me throw this flask away. So yeah, very important not to get hit after you take the... Um, mirrors. And you can set them both down, and these gargoyles will just dissipate into nothingness. And you can continue down, uh, to the next floor down. So I'm gonna cut the first video right here. I hope you guys are enjoying this series and excited about it, as I am. It's a good little Halloween special. So be sure to take the vow of non-stop gaming and subscribe, and join me next time for the next video.